book of Proverbs. And we're in Proverbs chapter 24, the Old Testament book of the Proverbs, chapter 24. Now, for those of you this morning who have read through the book of Proverbs, you read a chapter a day, you'll read the through, the, through the book of Proverbs every month. And you'll know that the book of the Proverbs this morning is full of wonderful sayings. And not only would you call them wonderful sayings, but you'll call them wise sayings. And I believe every believer should read at least one chapter of the book of Proverbs every day, and you'll read it through. I don't know how many times you'll read. You'll read through at least 12 times in the year. And the book of the Proverbs is a great book, you know, full of wonderful sayings and full of wise sayings that helps us to live properly for God in this wicked world in which we live. I just want to read two verses this morning, and I want you to turn with me to the book of Proverbs 24, and it's verse 24. Proverbs 24, verse 24, and verse 25. Now, let's read this carefully this morning. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him. Now, another translation reads from the original like this, He that saith unto the wrongdoer that he is right, shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him. That's why I always stick to the authorized version, because the authorized version brings it out in its strongest language. Verse 25, now let's read verse 25. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. Amen. And we know that the Lord will bless those two verses to our hearts this morning. Early on in the week, the Lord put a thought on my mind. Put a thought in my heart that I tried to forget and I tried to steer away from. And the more I tried to escape from this thought, the more the Lord laid it heavy upon my heart. I had no scripture for this thought until Wednesday morning when the Lord led me to these two verses in Proverbs 24, verse 24 and verse 25. And God signed and God sealed the thought that He placed upon my mind and upon my heart and upon my soul. Even when I was going to put the title of this message on Facebook, I did it with great reservation because I was very tempted, I'm going to say, I'm only human, to run away from this message. And I talked it over with Tracy, and I prayed over it, and the Lord says, this message is for someone. You have to preach it. The wee thought is this this morning, child of God. We as believers and we as Christians can make a great mistake. A great mistake by failing to see that sometimes we can do more harm by helping certain people in their trouble 
and in their hour of need. And that's the thought the Lord gave me. Sometimes we can do more harm in helping certain people in their time of trouble and in their hour of need. And you may say to me, George McConnell, that's an awful harsh, hard thing to say. Sometimes, child of God, listen. Sometimes we can do more harm and thinking that we're doing good by helping certain people in their time of trouble and in their time of need. Ah, but listen, I'm going to tell you what God's not saying. God's not saying that we ignore people in their time of trouble. God's not saying that we turn our back on people in their time of need. God's not saying that we shouldn't help these certain people in their time of trouble and their hour of need. That's not what God's saying. This is what God is saying. Sometimes we can do more harm by helping certain people in their time of trouble, in their hour of need, by the way we choose to help them. By the way we choose to help them. I wonder this morning, child of God, do you know somebody in trouble? Do you know somebody who has a great need this morning, who's in a great terrible need? And you want to help them. But the way you want to help them is not the way perhaps the Bible would teach you to help them. Maybe there's somebody here this morning and you're tempted this morning to tell a lie for someone. Listen, Christians tell lies. They shouldn't, but they do. And maybe you're being tempted to tell a lie for someone, to cover for someone in their time of trouble and in their hour of need. Maybe that person this morning is a family member. And that family member has never let you down. And you feel this morning, I owe them one. And they're in trouble. Maybe that person is a faithful friend who has stuck by you through thick and thin. Listen, I don't know, nor it's none of my business to know. I am only bringing to you what the Lord is in my heart. Maybe that someone this morning is someone who you really care about, and it hurts you to think of them suffering the painful consequences that they're about to face if you don't step in and do something. Maybe that person's an employer this morning. And that employer is trying to get you to say something. Maybe that employer yet wants you to say something to protect him. You know what's wrong. And you're thinking of your place in that company. And you're thinking of your position in that company. And you're wondering what would happen if I didn't go along with it. Now here's a wee thought the Lord wants you to know this morning. And you know it as well as I do. Two wrongs don't make a right. 
I remember last year. You wouldn't think this would happen to me, but it did. I was sitting in the canal court doing a wee course called the Speed Awareness Course. I remember one Tuesday on my way to do the senior citizens list, and I was driving through Hilltown, and I noticed this van with a back window out of it. When I noticed it, I wasn't doing 90 and a 30. And I slammed on the brakes. And two days later, I got a wee letter through the post. It can happen to pastors, and it would surprise you who else has been doing them. And I remember us all sitting down here, all us like back at school. And I remember feeling a very wee fella. If anybody in Kilkeel could see me now, I said. But here's something that both instructors said. If there's anybody here today and you're here covering for somebody else, for somebody else's speed and offense, I'm going to give you a chance. Leave now, get it sorted, or stay and be caught and prosecuted and brought before the courts. One elderly gentleman had to get up and leave. He didn't turn back because he was there covering for somebody else. He thought he was helping someone. He wasn't only doing them harm who he was covering for. He was doing himself harm. And the person at the front says, Dear love him, he has registered. He's in trouble. Listen, child of God, it's only natural we don't want to see friends hurt. And it's only natural this morning we don't want to see them suffer the painful consequences. But we can do a lot of harm by choosing to help someone the wrong way. There's nothing wrong in being tempted. We all face temptations. There's not a greater culprit that faces them than me. And remember, there's nobody suffered more temptations than our blessed Savior when He walked on this earth. What does our Bible say? He in all points was tempted just like we are, yet without sin. And maybe there's somebody in this meeting this morning, and you're tempted to help someone, but the wrong way. And God is saying to you this morning, don't go through it. Do you know why? They who cover for people in the wrong by telling a lie, 99 times out of 100 feel, feel angry, become angry, and feel victimized for what they've done. And maybe there's someone here this morning and you feel caught between a rock and a hard place. God has this message for you this morning. Two wrongs don't make a right. And never, ever, ever, ever allow your compassion to overrule your conviction. Never, ever allow your compassion, how loving and kind it may be, ever overrule 
your conviction. When we come to the book of the Proverbs, chapter 24 and verse 24, do you know what you see there? You see a person who should know better than what he is saying. In Proverbs 24 and verse 24, we have a dangerous decision that destroys. Sad child of God, and we get ourselves into a terrible condition when we succumb and conform to the law. Now, wait till I tell you something now, child of God, every one of us. We all have a bad nature that we like to hide. And mind you, the devil loves to play in that bad nature. Especially when that bad nature comes along under the title of anger, maybe. Because it's sad how many Christians can't control their anger. And mind you, the Bible has a lot to say about anger management. What does the Bible say in Ephesians 4, 26? Be ye angry and sin not, and let not the sun go down in your wrath. But you think of what Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 9 says. Do you know what Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 9 says? Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, because anger lies in the bosom of fools. And mind you, the devil can play havoc on the bad side of our nature. But the devil can also control us on the good side of our nature, that where we like to help. I know a businessman. You have a businessman. He was the kindest businessman I ever knew. And I'm telling you, people can play on your good nature. And because of this man's good nature, this man, friends, fell foul and lost his business. That's why the Lord Jesus says we're to be wise as serpents, yet harmless as doves. And you know, dear child of God, the devil this morning can manipulate us in our good nature. Do you know what, friends, this morning, listen, when it comes to helping certain people in their trouble, as I have said this something this morning, listen, because of our good nature and because we are kind and because we don't want to see them hurt and we don't want to see them face their painful consequences, listen, wait till I tell you something. It's easy to get sucked into something that you can't step out of. I want to repeat that this morning, child of God. Listen this morning. It's easy to get sucked into something that you can't step out of. And it's dangerous, child of God. And it's sinful, child of God. And it's wicked, child of God, to stoop and do wrong, to help somebody in their trouble. I don't know who you are this morning, child of God. I could see this morning far enough. Because helping can often harm. If we seek to help in the wrong way. And child of God this morning, Sometimes we're more concerned 
in saving someone's skin rather than to see their soul saved. Never stoop, child of God, to do any kind of wrong in order to help, because no help will be given, only harm. That's what's wrong with today's moral standards. Moral standards today, they're away, they're away to the fairies. Why? Because we have diminished the definition of sin. We are living in a day now even some Christians say, Ah, well, sure, there's no harm in telling a wee white lie. Sure, it's only a wee, there's no such thing as a wee white lie, friends. A wee white lie is wicked and it's sin in the eyes of God. Don't you come to me and tell me a wee white, there's no such thing as a wee white lie in God's sake. Well, maybe, maybe if only, if only do this the once, nothing will come of it. I'll tell you, it only takes you to do it the once. No wonder Isaiah, God said through the prophet Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Do you know what God said through Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20? Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil. Listen, child of God, when you stoop to do wrong in order to help someone out of their trouble, you're not helping them out of their trouble at all. You're driving them deeper into trouble. You stoop to do wrong to help someone, friend, who's in trouble and in their hour of need, and you're tempted to, to, do them, to do wrong to help them. Let me tell you now, child of God, you're playing with fire. Wonders God speaking to somebody here this morning. Somebody has come to you in recent days, listen, I need a wee favor. Would you cover me in this one? I owe you one. Listen, would you sign this here just this once? Listen, friends. Brother in Christ this morning, sister in Christ, Never you do wrong to cover another wrong. A man or a woman who does wrong to cover another wrong or even to help them is equally doing the wrong. Any person that stoops to do wrong to help anybody in their trouble is making themselves as just as guilty as the ones that has done the wrong. Now, there's not a softer man with a softer heart in this tabernacle this morning as what I have. I hate to see people hurting in any shape or form or another. I would go to Cork and back again if I could do somebody a good turn. But I dare not lower my convictions in any way, neither should you. When I think of the prodigal son, the father had to make him and had to allow him to encounter the painful process. And sometimes, child of God, men must face the painful process because it's the painful process that can bring repentance. It was where the prodigal son was at his worst, was when he began to think things. 
It was when the prodigal son was at his lowest point where he began to feel things in his heart, and he began to understand his wrong. Listen, sometimes we have to allow them to face their painful consequences. in order to put them back on the straight and narrow. No, sometimes we can do more harm by helping people when we're helping them in the wrong way. Now, will you take a wee look now at verse 25, please? Verse 25. But to them that rebuke him, shall be delayed, and a good blessing shall come upon them. Now, what does the Bible mean by rebuking someone? Does the Bible mean that you make that person feel bad? Of course it doesn't. Does that mean, when it comes to the word rebuke, that you put that person down? No, it doesn't mean putting the person down. Men, there's a lot of boys love to put people down. And there's a pile of boys, and they love to, they love to, uh, they love to make people feel bad. And I'll tell you another child of God: the ministry of your book, the ministry of rebuke, is not to drive people away either. The ministry of rebuke is always to restore. The ministry of rebuke is not for driving people down. It's to try and find them back on their feet again. The ministry of your book always is aimed for blessing and recovering to them that have wronged. Oh, the Lord Jesus, I think, is the best example if I'd only listen and look at him for a while. Do you remember then John's Gospel, chapter 8? Do you remember the story of the woman taken in adultery? She was caught for doing wrong. In fact, the law demanded that she should be stoned. And her accusers came and they threw her down at the feet of the blessed Christ of God. And the, the accuser said, well, the law says that she should be stoned. The law doesn't say that she should be stoned at all. The law says that both of them should be stoned. For mind you, when adultery takes place, a man's involved as well as a woman. A lot of boys like to point the wrong out in certain people, and maybe the man was their best friend. Who knows? We don't know. I love the way the Lord Jesus deals with her, you know. The Lord Jesus looks upon her, and you know what he didn't do? He didn't condemn her, you know. He didn't condemn her. And neither did he condone her. Do you know what he did? He corrected her. Go and sin no more. Listen, child of God, here's what we thought the Lord wants you. If you have a friend or a family member or somebody that you love who's in trouble, listen, will you don't, for goodness sake, don't do them any harm by stooping to do wrong to help them. You'll do them more good by gently and lovingly rebuke them. Because that's a definite decision that is demanded. If they fail to listen, you'll still be the person that will be blessed. Even though they fail to listen to your rebuke, you'll be the one who will still be blessed. The promise is in verse 25, isn't it? But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon thee. Here's a wee word, now child of God, Proverbs 1 and 10. If sinners entice thee, consent thou not. I don't know who you are. All I know I was to bring this message.
never stoop to do wrong to help. No matter who that person is, and even though it pains you, never you let go of your convictions because of compassion. You'll win a person more being honest, and I'll tell you if it's true, the person who could come to you asking you to tell a lie or asking you to do wrong to cover for them, they know rightly that you shouldn't do it and prove them right by not doing it. It's better to gently and lovingly rebuke than it is to stoop and do wrong to cover for them. John Wesley. And a preacher friend was at a home one evening. One lunchtime it was for their dinner. And the host's daughter was serving the dinner. She wasn't a Christian. And Wesley's preacher friend, he tore stripes of this young lass. Took her by the hand and says, look at that, Wesley, look at that for a Methodist hand. And there was a big sparkling ring on every finger, and the nails painted. It's not a disgrace for a Methodist hand. Wesley felt for the wee girl. She stood there crimson because of how he rebuked her. And John Wesley took her by the hand and looked upon the hand. He says, well, I'll tell you what I think. The hand is still beautiful in spite of what's on it. Because of Wesley's gentle rebuke, that young girl went to the meeting that Wesley was preaching that night, and she got wonderfully and gloriously saved and became a strong Christian and lived a strong Christian life to the day she died. And she always said in her testimony, what won her? wasn't a harsh rebuke. It was the loving, gentle rebuke of the great man, John Wesley. Now listen, child of God, I'm finished. But this is what the Lord is stressing to your heart this morning. Don't you ever stoop to do wrong in order to help someone in their trouble. Do right this morning. Rebuke and sometimes painful consequences is the, is, the, is the medicine that brings real healing. Trust and obey. There's no other way. Just trust and obey. Always do good to help. Never do wrong. May God bless His Word to our hearts this morning. Six hundred and